Hi. Now, in this example, what we've got to do is find the coordinates then of the points where the line y equals 5 minus x crosses the curve y equals x squared minus 2x minus 1. What I said earlier was that it's always a good idea to see if you can sketch the graphs. It gives you an idea what your solution should be. And for something like this, we've got the line y equals 5 minus x which is going to cross the y-axis here at a 5, so just mark that in at 5, got a negative gradient, and we have a parabola, y equals x squared minus 2x minus 1, which we know is going to cross the y-axis at negative 1, that's when x is naught, and it's going to be slightly pushed to the right of the y-axis, that line of symmetry coming through here. So you can see our points of intersection here and here. So to get those points, what we're going to need to do is solve simultaneously these two equations. So first of all, I'd write a subtitle in here at points of intersection, just to give some kind of idea what's going on for the reader. What we've got then is that we could put these two y values together. Okay, we could say that x squared minus 2x minus 1 will equal the y value 5 minus x. So for some value of x here, the y values on the blue line and the red curve will be exactly the same, and the same argument applies there. And that's why we can say this. Okay, so what we've got here is a quadratic equation because we've got the x squared so we need to rearrange it in the form of x squared and then the x term and then the constant equals zero so we just need to add x to both sides so we're going to have x squared minus 2x plus another x that's going to be minus x and then we've got minus 1 and if we subtract 5 from both sides we've got minus 6 equals zero so we can either use the formula if it doesn't factorize or if it does factorize, which it does in this example, just take the opportunity of factorizing it. And what we've got here is x minus 3 and x plus 2. So each factor would equal 0, so we've got x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0 and that would lead to x equaling 3 or x equaling minus 2. And a look at the sketch here would seem to suggest that this is right. We've got x is minus 2 at this point here. Let's just mark it in minus 2. And we've got x equals 3 would be this point over here. Now what about the y coordinates associated with the x ones? Well all we need to do is substitute x equals 3 and x is minus 2 into either this equation or this equation. Well y equals 5 minus x will seem the easier to, of the two to me so I'm going to do that. I'm going to say when x is 3 y will equal 5 take away the 3 so 5 take away 3 gives us the 2 or when x is minus 2 y will equal 5 minus minus 2 and that's going to give us 7. Okay, so what we've got in summary then is that the points of intersection okay, just wind up the question are, well, we've got 3, 2 and minus 2, 7 minus 2, 7. Let's put those y coordinates on. We've got 3, 2 and minus 2, 7. They look sensible. 7 is greater than the 5. The 2 is less than that 5. So if I was doing that, I'd believe I've got it right. But you can always check these back into these two equations anyway. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then of how we can get those two points of intersection. It's well worth noting at this point that you know we get a quadratic equation here so a quadratic equation remember can have two solutions, two roots, which it has in this particular case, 
one root or no roots and that's determined by the discriminant remember the b squared minus 4ac so in something like this if you did your b squared minus 4ac you'd find that it'd be greater than zero which would tell you that you've got two roots two points of intersection anyway we'll look at that in uh, another example so uh, for now I hope that uh, that's given you as I say some idea of how to go about this very basic type of a question